The Battle of Waterloo took place on June 18, 1815, near Waterloo, Belgium. It marked the final defeat of Napoleon Bonaparte and reshaped the political landscape of Europe. Key Figures Napoleon Bonaparte Emperor of the French, Napoleon Bonaparte was one of history's most renowned military leaders. Rising to power during the French Revolution, he became emperor in 1804 and embarked on a series of military campaigns to expand French territory across Europe. Waterloo marked his final defeat and the end of his reign. Duke of Wellington Arthur Wellesley, the Duke of Wellington, was a British military leader and statesman. He gained fame for his victories against Napoleon's armies in the Peninsula War and became a key figure in the Allied coalition against Napoleon. Wellington's leadership at Waterloo was instrumental in securing victory over the French. Gebhard Lebrecht von Blücher Field Marshal Gebhard Lebrecht von Blücher was a Prussian military commander who played a crucial role in the defeat of Napoleon at Waterloo. Known for his aggressive and impulsive tactics, Blücher's timely arrival with Prussian reinforcements bolstered the Allied forces and contributed to Napoleon's downfall. The Battle of Waterloo commenced in the early morning hours of June 18, 1815, as Napoleon Bonaparte's French forces launched their initial assaults against the Allied positions. The morning mist hung low over the battlefield, adding an eerie atmosphere to the unfolding conflict. Napoleon's plan was to strike swiftly and decisively, aiming to break through the Allied lines before reinforcements could arrive. The French army, numbering around 72,000 men, advanced with confidence, eager to secure victory and cement Napoleon's return to power. The first phase of the battle focused on the Allied right flank, where French troops launched fierce attacks against the fortified farmhouse of Hougoumont. Amidst the dense hedgerows and orchards surrounding the farmhouse, intense fighting erupted as French and Allied forces clashed in brutal close-quarters combat. Simultaneously, French artillery bombarded the Allied center, targeting key positions such as the farmhouse of La Haye Saint. The thunderous roar of cannons and muskets echoed across the battlefield as smoke filled the air, obscuring visibility and adding to the chaos of battle. Despite the ferocity of the French assaults, the Allied forces, under the command of the Duke of Wellington, held firm. British infantry regiments formed disciplined squares, repelling wave after wave of French attacks with devastating volleys of musket fire. The defense of Hougoumont and La Haye Saint proved critical in blunting the initial French onslaught and buying time for the Allies to reinforce their positions. As the morning wore on, the intensity of the fighting only increased, with both sides committing fresh troops to the fray. The sound of drums and bugles reverberated across the battlefield as reinforcements arrived, signaling the continuation of the desperate struggle for supremacy. As the Battle of Waterloo unfolded and the French assaults on the Allied positions intensified, the tide of the conflict began to shift with the arrival of Prussian forces under the command of Field Marshal Gebhard Lebrecht von Blücher. The Prussians, who had been marching to reinforce the Allied army, arrived on the battlefield at a critical moment, altering the course of the battle. Around midday, as the French attacks on the Allied lines continued unabated, Wellington anxiously awaited the arrival of the Prussian forces. The sound of distant cannon fire signaled their approach, offering a glimmer of hope to the embattled Allied troops. With the arrival of the Prussians, Napoleon faced a sudden and unexpected threat to his right flank. The French Emperor, initially confident in his ability to defeat the Allied forces before the Prussians could intervene, now found himself forced to reconsider his strategy. Blücher wasted no time in deploying his forces to support the Allied line, launching attacks against the French right flank and threatening Napoleon's rear. The arrival of the Prussian forces added a new dimension to the battle, stretching French resources thin and forcing Napoleon to divert troops to face the fresh threat. The Allied commanders, recognizing the opportunity presented by the Prussian arrival, coordinated their efforts to exploit the weakened French position. Wellington, in close communication with Blücher, adjusted his strategy to take advantage of the Prussian attacks and launch a coordinated counteroffensive against the French. The combined Allied forces, bolstered by the arrival of the Prussians, intensified their assault on the French lines. The pressure on Napoleon's army mounted as French troops found themselves outnumbered and surrounded, facing attacks from both the front and the flank. The Battle of Waterloo culminated in a decisive victory for the Allied coalition, marking the final defeat of Napoleon Bonaparte and ending his ambitions for European dominance. Despite Napoleon's initial successes and fierce resistance from his troops, the timely arrival of Prussian reinforcements under Field Marshal Blücher, coupled with the coordinated efforts of the Allied commanders, turned the tide of the battle in favor of the Allies. The French army, battered and demoralized, was forced into retreat as the combined Allied forces overwhelmed their positions. 
Napoleon's famous Imperial Guard, considered invincible until then, was defeated, sealing the fate of the French Emperor and his ambitions for conquest. The Allied victory at Waterloo had far-reaching consequences, reshaping the political landscape of Europe and ushering in a new era of stability. Napoleon was subsequently exiled to the remote island of St. Helena, where he spent the remainder of his days in captivity until his death in 1821. With Napoleon's defeat, the Bourbon monarchy was restored to power in France, bringing an end to the tumultuous period of the Napoleonic Wars. That concludes this video on the Battle of Waterloo. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment what you would like me to cover next.